We were founded in the 1600s in Le Puy, France, and our founder challenged us to grow in the love of God and the love of neighbor without distinction. That's, I believe, what we have tried to do ever since then. When we first came to New York State back in the 1800s, we were asked to come teach school. So for many years, our main ministry was either teaching children in school or doing nursing work. When I was in fourth grade, I had transferred to St. Aloysius Academy in Rome, where the Sisters of St. Joseph were. Our school wasn't the most up-to-date, but the basic education was handled in a very proficient and professional way. I am one of 10 siblings, all of whom attended St. Patrick's Grammar School and High School, and were among the thousands who benefited from the work of the Sisters of St. Joseph. We have served for many years in the Syracuse Diocese and the Albany Diocese in the Binghamton area, Oswego, Rome, Utica, Little Falls, the Schenectady, Amsterdam, Glens Falls, Whitehall, and so many both urban and suburban areas and rural areas of um, what is known as the Syracuse and the Albany Diocese. We've been in this diocese since 1858. That's a long history. We served whoever was there to serve all people without distinction. That has been our pride, our joy, and our ministry. After Vatican II, uh, we branched out into many more fields of ministry, serving whatever the needs were of the times. They've expanded everything from healthcare, parish ministry, diocesan ministry, colleges, very big in social justice. I know no group of people in this area that are more committed to social justice and helping the poor and the marginalized and demanding that those who are disadvantaged are cared for. I think they've tried to teach us, their pupils, about love of neighbor and how to respond to, to human need. Right now, we are looking to serve the needs of both our elderly and infirm sisters and the elderly in the community. We have approximately 90 sisters who are receiving nursing care. There are sisters who need what might be called an assisted living level of care, up to those who need skilled nursing care around the clock. We always anticipated that there would be a lot of younger sisters who would care for us as we got old, as we cared for those who, who came ahead of us. Uh, times are different now, and we don't have the uh, large number of, of younger sisters. It is that challenge that caused us to look for other options that would help us with that in the future. We actually began talking with the St. Peter's group and the Eddy group in terms of future need for nursing home care. The possibility then of the PACE program evolved from there. PACE is an acronym for Program of All-Inclusive Care for the Elderly. We are an alternative to nursing home care with a mission of keeping seniors in their communities and their homes for as long as is medically and socially feasible. People need more services and in many instances they either can't afford those services or they're not available or they don't know how to access them. The great part of PACE is they provide all the medical needs that the person would need but they also provide the transportation. PACE comes and picks them up, takes them to a center where they do arts and crafts, they do recreational things, they do uh, physical therapy type things, they might watch a movie. But it keeps them alert and involved socially in relationships and physically. And then of course they come home. From my experience with them, they're very kind, very gentle, very caring of their clients. We identified that there are over 1,500 seniors in the surrounding community that could benefit from a program like ours. 
This is an opportunity to enable our sisters to stay in the community. And at the same time, it is an outreach to the dear neighbor who are vulnerable because of age and infirmity. The Sisters of St. Joseph are undertaking the building project for our new PACE Center. They will be building the new PACE Center here on the grounds of the Provincial House. We're certainly asking for people's financial support because the renovations are going to be expensive. We're entering on a capital campaign looking for $8 million to help us pay for the renovation and to help us improve and upgrade some of the living areas for our senior sisters. You think about how you love your mother and how your mother has affected you in the most profound ways possible. And I feel like the sisters have been in many ways wonderful mothers to many of us as we've grown. And it's our time now to be the children that care for them as they need it and continue their mission. We give not because they have a need. We're giving because we have a need. We have a need to give back. They gave us the start in life that has been so beneficial to thousands upon thousands of folks like me. And now, in that later stage of their lives, we owe it to them. I think we owe it to them to really help to care for them, to make their older years productive, sociable, spiritual, and active, as active as they can be. Retired sisters uh, aren't really retired. They do marvelous work in terms of visiting parishioners and hospitals and nursing homes. And of course, they're a powerful prayer community as well. When we're able to be the benefactors rather than the beneficiaries, I think it's an obligation and responsibility that we need to accept and to, to embrace. Having worked in parishes, worked with the elderly, visited nursing homes. I know there is a great need to have something like this program. Eddie Senior Care has a mission that is very, very similar to ours in terms of care for people, especially those who are vulnerable. And that really excites me because it's, it's not just renting out space or reconstructing space but it is truly a partnership in carrying out a mission. This expansion into this county could not happen without the Sisters of St. Joseph. <laughs>